how do you green buildings that were put up long ago? In Montreal, just west of the downtown, the Benny Farm housing complex has been home to many generations over the years. But with time, the buildings had fallen into disrepair. The government and every expert they talked to wanted to tear the whole thing down. But there was a strong sense of community among the people still living there. And its precious urban garden was too valuable to lose. Two architects saw beyond the rusted balconies and realized the site's potential. For Mark Podubiak, the only way to save Benny Farm was to give it a green renovation. Building on the existing, bringing it up to date, but we were all in agreement that it was old and it needed, it needed some love and some care. For Danny Pearl, it was also about preserving a community. It was really about community values. And the idea of Garden City is not simply the garden as a beautiful garden that we're still here now. It's about the relationship of the units to the landscape, the families. Some new buildings were constructed, but the heart of the complex remains the old buildings that are undergoing a green retrofit. So what we're gonna do here is take down the brick, sort it, prepare it, and then we're gonna insulate the entire outside of the building. It's like putting on a blanket. We really believe that by preserving the existing buildings, there was a strategy here that we could ensure the affordability of housing here over the long term. The other strategy for keeping costs down was to capture all the free energy they could. The logical place to start was with the sun. So here we're looking at a solar air wall, basically which preheats the fresh air that we need in our building. And right here, we're looking at a wall that's got thousands of holes. And the principle is very simple. The sun hits the wall, the surface heats up, and therefore the air behind the surface heats up. And basically the hot air that's stale, before we throw it out, we transfer the heat to this fresh air going in. And this is how we're able to get fresh air in the building for free. The second green energy strategy was to use solar collectors to heat up the water for the apartments. We're looking here at two of the solar evacuated tubes that are gonna heat the hot water for all the domestic hot water use in this building. By not having any air inside, we increase the efficiency of the sun hitting the surface. The blue metallic surface absorbs that heat and this water then gets collected in thousands of tubes here on the roof and will become the preheating of the hot water for the entire building. To heat the actual buildings, the architects chose geothermal energy from the earth, but with a made in Canada setup. Under the courtyards between the Benny Farm buildings, 24 deep wells have been dug to contain the geothermal pipes. A heat pump in each individual complex captures the heat from the ground below. The installation works cooperatively among the different buildings. Any surplus heat from one project can be sent through the network to be shared with the others. But in Montreal, the winters are cold. There was the possible danger of taking so much heat out of the ground that the temperature in the geothermal wells would drop or maybe even freeze. Then there wouldn't be enough ground heat available for the buildings. The answer was to put energy from the sun back into the ground during the summer. The rooftop solar evacuated tubes collect surplus heat energy, which is then sent down to warm up the geothermal wells. Over the 12 months of the year, the system balances out. The sustainable energy systems not only work together, they are also all owned by the complex's new central energy company called Green Energy Benny Farm. The idea is that this cooperative is going to own, manage, and sell the energy to each of the three housing groups that's connected to it. And this is a wonderful relationship. It takes itself away from the utility companies, gives it a certain freedom. 
people are tired about waiting for the magic pill to solve our problems. In the end, it's got to do with social activism, uh, appropriating your own community, and it's hard work. But it's exciting when we see other communities buoyed by our success. When I come and walk around here um, in the early evening in the summer and there's hundreds of kids running around and, and playing here, um, that to me is the tremendously satisfying. It works. What will it take to really make a difference in the way we put our communities together? Off Canada's west coast, on the southern tip of Vancouver Island, sits the city of Victoria. It's an historic city that's not afraid to experiment with a green retrofit. This industrial area may seem like a strange place to be building green, but construction is going on here for an entire ecological community. It's going to take about 10 years to complete, but the visionaries who are pulling it all together are convinced they're building the very future of sustainable living. Across the bridge from downtown Victoria, the western side of the harbor is being transformed. At Dockside Green, architect Peter Busby is taking green design to new heights. Dockside Green is a completely new opportunity uh, for us. First of all, there's a wide variety of buildings going up at Dockside. That's important. We don't want to build neighborhoods that are just about living or just about working in our urban environments. We want to have a balance so that if people choose to live and work in a reasonable proximity of one another, they, they can do that. There's a certain amount of industrial space and warehouse space so that people can run little businesses here and there are loft apartments above that. Whenever we put up a building, people have to get to and from it. So, of course, we want to build an urban location so we can take the bus or, or walk or, or, or ride our bicycle. What a, what a change that would make. It was instant. Busby's partner, Terence Williams, showed me around the construction site. When the village is complete, uh, we'll see a community of about two to two and a half thousand people in a mixture of low-rise townhouses and um, concrete condominiums and uh, hopefully a hotel. This is Harbour Road on the right-hand side, the existing uh, heavy industry that will stay. This will continue to be um, a ship repair plant here. The repair facility for the ships will include a new dry dock turntable. The architects picked up on the circular form in their design for Dockside's town plaza, which will be built across the road. The we've got in the middle here, and I really like the way that this now starts to relate the amphitheater to Esquimalt Road. It's going back to and trying to understand living with nature. All of the roofs, for instance, on our buildings are going to be green roofs. So when you're at, say, the 10th floor looking down, you don't see a sea of asphalt. The developer of the Dockside project is Joe Van Belligam. For him, water is a valuable resource. So he's constructing a waterway to treat and recycle all the water right on site. And so then the water is going to come, where is the creek going to come? Well, the creek actually flows right even underneath these decks and stands out here. And what we're using um, is an adaptive um, species. Uh, a plant material right. so that it actually serves as a cleansing process for the stormwater and rainwater as well. So when you're on this deck, um, you know, you'll have your, t your uh, table out here and you'll see this flowing creek going right by. Nice. We're not using municipal storm or sewer system because we're treating all our sewage on site and using the treated water to flush toilets and irrigation. While the on-site treatment plant is cleaning up the sewage, it's also producing heat. That's a free source of energy that will be tapped to warm the buildings. Any excess heat, and even the cleaned up water, could also be sold to the neighboring industries. For this eco-village, waste actually becomes a resource. The cement plant across the water 
is supplying Dockside with a byproduct of its manufacturing process called fly ash, which is used to make a greener type of concrete. And a pile of wood chips will end up making heat and electricity for its new eco neighbors. Waste sawdust will be heated under pressure in order to power a turbine that will create all the heat needed for the dockside buildings. I really believe where the future is going to be that this type of development will become the norm um, out of necessity. You know, when you're in an office building and you have natural daylight and you feel thermally comfortable and you can breathe fresh air, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to demand that that's the kind of space you're going to get in the future. We relied on engineering solutions to, to design our buildings. We, we sealed all of our buildings and we said, don't worry about the fresh air because we can deal with air conditioning. Don't worry about the daylight uh, because we can blast the hell out of, uh, of the rooms that you work in by putting in vast amounts of artificial light. Um, and that's backfired. The construction industry, unfortunately, is one of the slowest industries to learn about change. Construction, after all, is the largest industry in Canada. It consumes the most materials. It has the biggest impact on the environment in every aspect of the way it works. We have larger and larger houses uh, with rooms that never get used. We're consuming vast resources. Education is, is very important for, for change in, in the construction industry. And education has to be at every level. First of all, the marketplace, the purchasers of or the consumers of buildings. We need the people who are going into those spaces to, to ask the right questions. How healthy is my environment? What's my building made out of? What's, what are the pollutants that are, that are off-gassing into my, into my house? People are not willing to pay for electricity and gas as it continues and continues to go up. What's the alternative? Well, design the house tighter and uh, make your monthly bills less because you're going to pay more for the cost of running your house than you ever will for the cost of the purchase of the house. I think what the Green Movement is doing is basically, hopefully we're going to be able to say, we made a big mistake there, we're sorry, we're now going to have to go in a new direction and be a little more humble. We're already building houses and apartments that are easier on the environment. And what's more, they're healthier, economical, and even fun to live in.